gentlemen. It is not that bad. All we first need to do is these equations I know are not in slope intercept form, right? So the first thing we do is rewrite them in slope intercept form. So I'll subtract a 3x. Therefore, I have 2y is less than negative 3x plus 6. Then I'll divide by 2. And I get y is less than negative 3 halves x plus 3. Over here, I will subtract 6x. So therefore, I have 4y is greater than negative 6x minus 12. Then I'll divide by 4. And I get y is greater than, reduce this, becomes negative 3 halves minus 3. X. Does everybody follow me so far? All I did was solve for y. Basic thing we need to make sure you do. If you have problems, come and see me. So now, all we're simply going to do is we have 1, 2, 3, 4. We're just going to, instead of doing two um, equations, Ashley, OK? Instead of doing two equations, we're just going to do four on the same coordinate axis. All right. So um, if you guys remember, when we're graphing, um, when we're graphing when we have an equation of x equals or y equals, I always like to go back and think about the equation. If x equals 10, let's just think about x equals 10. No matter what y is, x always equals 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. x equals 10 when y equals 0. x equals 10 when y is positive. x equals 10 when y is negative. It doesn't matter what the point, what y value is, x is always equal to 10. So when x is equal or greater than less than, it's going to produce a vertical line. All right? Now, since it's less than or equal to, that's going to be solid. And ladies and gentlemen, you can use a test point. But what are, what are, where are all the x values that are less than negative 10? Are they to the left or to the right? To the left. All the x values that are less than this line are to the left. Now, when you're dealing with more than one equation, I, rather than doing my shading, I like to just use arrows until I find my feasible solution, which I'll talk about in a second. So I'm just going to show arrows saying, hey, I should shade to the left. Because sometimes, unless you're using like color pencils, it can get like really crazy. So now let's do the next one. The next one says x is greater than negative 2. Well, that's going to be a vertical line at negative 2. And that's a less than or greater than or equal to, so that's solid. And that's going to be all values going to the right. Does everybody follow me? Then we graph the next one. y is less than negative 3 halves x plus 3. Again, we need to find the y-intercept. 1, 2, 3. And the slope tells us to go down 3 to the right 2. The difference being this one is a dashed line, right? It's less than. OK? And since it's less than, I know I'm going to be shading down below. Then the next one is y is greater than negative 3 halves minus 3. So now I go down negative 3, 1, 2, 3. And then I'm going to go down 3 to the right 2. And that one's greater than, so that's going to be above. OK, so do you guys see the only region where every single inequality is true? It's going to be this nice little region here. So I'm just going to shade the region where they're all true. OK? And that region, when you have a region that is true for both inequalities or more than one, that's called our feasible region. And we'll talk more about that next class period. OK? Now, preparation.